Hey everyone, thanks for joining me for another devlog for Dauphin. I want to kick this one off by playing a little bit of catch up here. I've actually spent quite a bit of time just working on Dauphin without the burden of the camera and the voiceover work for the past few weeks, and as a result I've made a bunch of progress that I'm excited to share with you guys. The first thing I want to talk about here is something that a handful of you managed to notice from the previous devlog, and that is that our trees and bushes on the beach can now be corrupted. This may not seem like much, it might just seem like I added some extra effects to some of these trees and bushes, but as you just saw there, the reality of what's happening here is that I had to rework the corruption system almost entirely to enable more things to both be corrupted and uncorrupted as the player and other corrupted enemies or organisms interact with them. You might remember that my previous implementation of the corruption system focused on an abstract class called Organism. Classes that inherited from this organism class, like the crab and the bat, among other things, would be able to be corrupted and show corruption with a particle system and a custom shader. I don't really think that was a bad first approach, but as I started to think about moving the corruption system from the crabs to things like the bushes and the trees, I realized it was just a bit too prescriptive. For example, an organism was required to be a kinematic body 2D, where that just really doesn't make sense for bushes and trees. These are static body 2Ds. So, for those factors, among others, I decided to just break apart this abstract organism class and turn the corruption system into something more composition-based. The result is this brand new corruption scene, which is so much more flexible than my previous inheritance-based approach. This scene can be attached as a child to any other scene, and what's special about it is that it can understand when it's interacting with other entities in the game that have corruption as a child. So what this means is that when one corrupted entity comes into contact with another one, this component manages the spread of corruption between them, and also the display of that corruption on the entity. The way I do that is if we click on the top level corruption item here and go over to the inspector, you can see that I'm using dependency injection to pass in the sprite of the parent. What this means is that this corruption component can now make changes to that sprite's shader and reflect the corruption with that kind of purple coloring you were seeing on those trees and bushes from before. With this new composition-based approach, all I had to do to enable corruption on the bushes and the trees was to go into those individual scenes and add corruption as a child node. Now when the crabs come into contact with the bushes, they know how to spread that corruption and that is reflected in the color of the bushes. At face value, that may not seem like too big of a change, but what it really does is take a huge step towards bringing Dauphin's world to life. What this means is that when we have corrupted creatures that can move around like the crab on an island, before the player even sets foot on that island, those creatures can explore and organically and naturally spread that corruption across the island. So as you appear on the island, you'll realize that so much corruption has been spread, and it'll be your job to figure out how to find the source, get rid of it, and turn everything back to normal. My second big update since the end of the last devlog was basically a third overhaul of my inventory system. You probably recall from the last video that I spent basically a day reworking my existing system, and since then I've spent about a week overhauling it a third time. If I go ahead and press tab, you will see something looking very different from what you've seen before. What we're looking at here is the player's field notes, and this is meant to be a notebook that the marine biologist carries with him or her out on their work in the field. Now you can also see it has tabs on the right side here. The first of these tabs will represent the inventory, which is still very much the work in progress that you see before us here. If we click on the other tabs, I'm planning for things like having a map, a creature log, which will show the various creatures that you've saved from corruption, and a journal, which will be a place for the player to take notes. Back on the inventory page here, I briefly want to talk about my vision for this new interface. First off, on the right hand side, you can see the actual inventory itself, in this case for the collection bag. Now, I still want the player to be able to toggle between what they have in their collection bag, their buoyancy compensator vest, and in their specimen jars. And that's going to happen with these three buttons at the bottom, which will ultimately be toggles, but we're not quite there yet. When you tap on this one, we'll see the collection bag. When you tap on the middle one, that'll be the buoyancy compensator vest, so this will change to reflect that. And of course, the same is true for the specimen jars in the bottom right. Also on the left-hand side of the page here, we have some equipment slots. Now, one of these equipment slots I plan to reserve for a tool. In this case, the player has a shovel equipped, although you can't see it here yet. 
and the other slot will be reserved for some kind of weapon. And my plan is for whatever weapon you have equipped to influence the type of magical decorrupting attack that the player is capable of casting. And up here on top, we have some kind of accessory or hat slot. Not really sure what I'm gonna do with that yet, but I just know I want an extra accessory up there. My plan for the beginning of this devlog is to continue work on the inventory system to the point where I can equip a new tool. If I can equip a new tool on the player, it will allow me to start to develop the interaction with that tool. And as an example and a little bit of a teaser, it'd be nice if we could equip a fishing pole so that we could start building out a fishing system. I'll leave you with that for now. I'm gonna dive back in on this inventory and we'll catch up probably in a few days because I think this is gonna take a while. Hey everyone, it is now a beautiful Sunday morning. Just wanted to take a quick break and check in with some progress that I've made on the inventory system. So if we pop open the inventory system here, it's not really gonna look too much different. I still have quite a bit of work to do, but we now have the ability to swap between the various sub inventories that the player can have. So our specimen jars, our buoyancy compensator vest, and our collection bag. The other big enhancement that I made here was to allow the player to correctly sort items that he picks up into the correct inventory. So if we go grab this little shell fragment here, we'll see that it appears in the collection bag. But if we were to pick up an item that was tagged with a type of tool, it would actually appear in the buoyancy compensator vest here. So this really sets up the groundwork for being able to find a new tool like a shovel or a fishing pole, have it in your inventory here, and then once it's in the inventory, we'll be able to drag it into the tool slot and use it. So that's where I'm gonna keep focusing my efforts today. Good morning everyone, it's going on 7 a.m. on Tuesday morning. I've spent a couple days really heads down on this inventory stuff and I'm happy to report that I've made some pretty cool progress to show you guys. What I've been focusing on over these past two days is the player's ability to not only find new tools and weapons, but to equip and use them as well. So you can see we're up here in the forest above the beach and you'll notice that the player no longer has any kind of shield strapped to his back. And as a result, when we left click, we no longer perform any kind of basic attack. So now we'll head down to the beach and see what we can find down here. So you see two items. We've got the shovel that we've used before and also a new bronze sword that I've created for this demo. We'll go ahead and swipe both of these items up and get out of danger here. Because these two items I just collected are of type tool and weapon, I should be able to open up my inventory and find those in the buoyancy compensator vest, which we see here. Now I know it isn't labeled yet, but over here on the left in the equipment section, these equipment slots can actually hold items of different types. On the left we have a weapon slot and on the right we have a tool slot. If I try to drag a tool like the shovel into the weapon slot, it won't work. But it will work if I drag it into the tool slot and vice versa with our bronze sword. So we just drag those in to equip them and if we dismiss the inventory we can now see those items on the player's back. And because we have a weapon in the weapon slot we can now perform a basic attack with the left click. And as you might expect, if you wanted to unequip these items, you would just open up the inventory and drag those back into your vest. Then you would not have these items on your back, you wouldn't be able to attack anymore, and you could replace your weapon with something more powerful, or your tool with a different tool for a different purpose. Now one thing I want to discuss with you guys and actually get your feedback on is the input scheme that's kind of come to life as a result of this equipment system. Now as I mentioned before, if you have a weapon in the left slot, you'll be able to left click and perform a basic melee attack. Similarly, if you have a tool in the right slot, you'll be able to right click and perform an action with that tool. Now I don't have any kind of dig action set up yet, but that's what would be happening if I was right clicking with a shovel in the tool slot. Now you may remember from before that I used to use right click to cast these spells that would decorrupt these corrupted creatures. 
Because I have both of my mouse buttons tied up at this point, I have moved those spell casts to the number row, so keys one through five. So right now, if I tap one, we will see that water projectile that I worked on before launch in whatever direction the mouse is in. I think a common solution to the problem of managing multiple tools and weapons in a game like this is to have this big long bar at the bottom of your screen that has all your tools and weapons. You can then use the mouse wheel to scroll through them or the number keys to select a particular item. I know this is a popular system, but I honestly just really don't like it. Too many times I find myself suddenly appearing upon an enemy and I'm just scrolling through like crazy trying to select a particular weapon and I end up with the pickaxe or something. It just doesn't work for me. As a result, my design here is much more deliberate. You have a limited number of slots that you can use for tools and weapons on your person, meaning you have to kind of critically think about the items that you want to bring with you off your research vessel when you go to explore a new island. Similarly, you always have the same slot for your weapon and your tool, meaning that you can feel confident left-clicking to defend yourself and using the number keys to defend yourself and right-clicking to use your tool at any point in time. So I'd love to hear your thoughts on that. Whether you love it or think it's too restrictive or have a new idea altogether, certainly what I showed you is not set in stone. All right, with all that out of the way, the question becomes, where do we go next? Now that we can equip tools in our equipment panel and use them with a right click, it seems like I'm ready to equip something like a fishing pole and try to actually go fishing. So I think even though I have a lot of work to do designing that system, I'm just gonna see if I can create a little fishing pole for the player to carry around with him. All right, it is now a gloomy Thursday morning around 7 a.m. I think it's time to give the final update for this week's devlog. I won't claim to have made a ton of progress since the last update, but I did manage to get our little fishing pole item in the game. So as you might expect, you can pick it up, open up your inventory, and put that fishing pole into the tool slot. And I realize it looks ridiculous right now because the fishing pole is way too big. That's something that I'll be fixing in the next devlog. Apart from just enabling the player to pick up new tools, I've also laid the groundwork for the player to actually use them. You can see we are in my player class here looking at the unhandled input function. And if we scroll down to where I'm actually capturing this input, you can see that in the case where we're capturing input to use either the primary weapon slot or the secondary tool slot, I'm calling a function called use equipment, which is defined just below. We pass the piece of equipment from that slot into this function and we switch over its type, basically deciding, okay, if it's a melee weapon, we want to request an attack state. If it's a fishing pole, we want to request a fish state. So all of the states that define the behavior to interact with these various tools will be owned by the player. I will mention that at first I was considering letting the fishing pole scene own all the logic for the fishing state. It sounded kind of nice from like a separation of concerns perspective, but there was going to be a lot of dependency injection required, injecting things like the player's animation player so that we could perform certain animations. Ultimately, I decided that was not really a good idea, and instead I let the player own all the various states for the behaviors that he can perform. They're a lot easier to actually trigger this way, and conceptually I think it makes more sense. The fishing pole itself doesn't know how to fish, instead the user with the fishing pole knows how to use it. So that's why I went with this design choice. All right, that is probably just about enough rambling from me. Time to wrap up this week's devlog, and I have to say I'm thrilled with the progress we made. If you think about it, the whole system of picking up an item, being able to equip it to your character, and having the data associated with that item affect the character's attributes and behaviors is just like a major part of an RPG, and I'm so happy that I was able to knock that out this week. As always, your support has been amazing as the channel continues to grow. I'm as excited as ever to keep working on Dauphin, and I'm thrilled to have you guys along with me for the ride. Thanks so much for watching, hope you enjoyed the video, and stay safe out there.